Hi, this is Vicki Gofford Parnell. I had to take care of some business before I got on here because they tried to act up, but you know what? Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world, such as it is with the true children of God. Hallelujah. I have come to share, Lord willing, a vision with you that I had earlier today. Today is 829-24, and this is called A Vision of Antichrist Upon a Throne. A Vision of Antichrist Upon a Throne. So let us pray. Now before we do pray, I want to bring this to everyone's attention. I have not been allowed to share these yet, but I've had several dreams about weather machines. Weapons. Weaponized weather machines, I guess what you call it. Which is partly what's causing the hurricanes and things, from my understanding. But I had a very severe headache today. I don't have headaches. The Lord Jesus Christ delivered me of that. First thing I recognized... For those of you who may not know, there is an actual spirit called pain. I bound the spirit of pain, and it, 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 the pain left, but the pressure was still there. And, and Jesus Christ has done healed me of sinus issues, of mold, allergies, and all that. You know, you do the test, you get pricked, you do all that, you know. And I was told I was severely allergic to, to mold. Not anymore. Praise God. All glory to Father God and Jesus Christ. But I still felt this pressure. And I was asking the Lord, what, what do I do? What, how do I pray? How do I pray? Because I prayed against everything else. And it's not that Jesus Christ's name is ineffective. It's the Lord is teaching me. Like when I feel this, what is this, Lord? And then where he's been showing me these dreams with the weather machines, I understood what he meant. Here's what he told me to pray about. Now this he told me to pray over myself, <clears throat> like, a, like an area around me. My environment where I'm at, land, property, house, vehicle, you know, wherever. My family and all that pertains to me directly or indirectly. And what I prayed was, pray against, this is what he told me, pray against atmospherical pressure to be restored in Jesus Christ's name due to the weather machine weapons manipulations. And it worked. Now again, I pray, no weapon formed against me shall prosper, Isaiah 54, 17. I stand on the word, and, and I just say, once you start building up your faith, the enemy stops a lot quicker. So when this persisted, I got down and said, Lord, okay, what, 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 what are you trying to tell me? I you know, repented, broke all covenants and agreements, known or unknown, in case I had let an opening in, and it's still there. And that's when he said, and I understood he's talking about the, the pressure changing due to the storms and due to all these things. Now, I, I don't study all this stuff. The only time I start studying is when the Lord leads me. Or I start looking up. Again, the Lord leads me. The Lord being the Lord Jesus Christ. When he starts saying, okay, it's, as you're going through reading over all these prophecies and words and visions again, you're going to send out the confirmation. Look it up. You know, then he, But I even pray, Holy Spirit. Where do I go? I want to read a bunch of garbage. Show me where I need to go. And he does. Because I ask in Jesus Christ's name. And John 14, 26 says he, he's our teacher, our comforter. He's, he's so much more. He's our dear, dear friend. So those of you that's taken note, try, test, discern this and everything else I say, everything else that's given. But again, that's pray against atmospherical pressure. To be restored in Jesus Christ's name due to weather machine weapons manipulation. And I asked, could I pray over the whole? He said, no, some of it has to be allowed. So that's why over myself, this ministry, you know, over. But even, and it was like I could see enclosing myself in like a bubble. But even in the area so that if I walked outside or whatever or past the area I'd ask covered, I was still good. But you pray about that. And ask Jesus Christ for it. As I said, I had a little incident for her. I got on here. Something I've been praying about and praying about and praying about. Again, Greeks bearing gifts. And I peeled layer upon layer. And I still had a slight, I don't, Lord, show me. Well, he did. So I had to redo this video. Restart it. Just in the beginning of it. It's okay. It's all God's time.
You don't make me angry. Don't make me upset. It's just like, okay, Lord, for your glory, let's do it again. So let's pray and let's be obedient to Jesus Christ in all that he leads us to do. He is so much more than just our Savior. He is our Lord, our friend, our friend, our spiritual husband. So much more. Hallelujah. Holy Spirit, direct this prayer. Please do not let me speak a word. Even in, in if I say anything at the end or anything else, I prayed this before I got on here. But again, don't let me speak a word concerning this vision or anything else afterwards that does not glorify Father God and is not led by you in Jesus Christ's name. If it's not from Father God, if it's not from Jesus Christ, not from you, Holy Spirit, or anything from the heaven that God lives in, then don't let me speak it if it's not from them. Thank you, sweet friend. Now, Lord, in the name of Jesus, again, I ask that this be placed under the barrier of stealth and invisibility. Not that I'm afraid. <laughs> no. I did have to get rid of monitoring spirit randomly in here. And yes, Lord, we took care of it as you said to do. So, Father, I ask so no retaliation, backlash, interference, or such like. Reason I'm asking today to be placed under the barrier of stealth and invisibility in addition to allowing me to get these things up without having to fight the enemy one-on-one -on -one constantly is also because I did have a monitoring spirit in here, an astro, an astro projector, my understanding, which, you know, I, I did as you said. They won't be back in Jesus Christ's name. So, Father, but also, I don't want my prayers to be overheard and the enemy to start building up counterattacks before I'm even done. Because you have revealed to me how that when your children, your children, not just me, your children, I'm just one of your children, that's it. I'm one of your children. There's no big eyes and no little eyes. When we begin praying, we begin praying in the power, when we begin praying in authority, when we begin praying the authority of your name, Jesus Christ, when we begin praying, in the Holy Spirit and effective and precision prayers. It not only shakes the depths of hell. It sends out signatures into the spirit realm. That the enemy hones in on. And because of that I ask to be covered. I don't mind shaking hell or wherever. I just want them to know my exact location where they will try to spy. And will try to to counteract before. That's why I ask no retaliation, backlash, interference, random acts, directly or indirectly, activating the no retaliation clause in all your existence and knowledge, Father God, with the understanding that should one come in and be allowed, it is because you allowed it for a reason. But I'll take care of them too. In Jesus Christ's name, however you say, Father God, Jesus Christ, and sweet Holy Spirit, I cancel all attacks of the enemy, all weapons, gizmo, gadgets, and such like. Nullify their effects. Reverse. Crush them in Jesus Christ's name. Disable them. And the reason I'm doing so many, Lord, you want me to explain, is because some you still need online. Disable those. Crush the ones not needed. Send all the effects, evil effects, back to them. And whatever else you want to do, Father God, in Jesus Christ's name. Standing on Proverbs. 26 2 the curse causes shall not come and lord i'm hearing you say explain that again i started to explain it on the other video in the name of jesus christ holy spirit lead me proverbs 26 2 speaks of as the bird wandering as a swallow flying the curse causes shall not come and i ask you lord i prayed ephesians 1 17 9 through 19 over me and ask you lord what exactly does that mean the bird wandering, the bird that flitters from here to there, flies from here to there with no random path, is a random curse, random spell, random something we run into. Not particularly aimed at us, but we can still reject it when we realize what it is, and it will not light, it will not stay, it will re-return to the cinder. But the swallow flying, swallows have a direct path when they set out they are not 
swayed going here, then they follow their path. So that is a direct assigned curse attack from the enemy. The curse causes shall not come. It means we are not sending curses on people. It means we are just using our shield of faith and deflecting them right back. What doesn't become pointless and the fiery darts quenched will go back to them. A shield deflects. Not only does it stop, it deflects. And it, when you do not accept something, you return it to sender. And that is what I'm doing in Jesus Christ's name. Hallelujah, Lord, I give you praise. I give you praise. I give you praise. Okay, I hear you, Lord. Also, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, you have shown me the curse. Curses are ill-spoken words with intent to harm. Look up the definition. It's there. But inside those curses, there is spells, hexes, vexes, charms, all these things, bewitchments. You have druidism, mysticism, all this garbage, witchy wahoo garbage. It's all done through the manipulation, witchcraft spirit, and witchcraft is what, is what all that's called. Demonic powers used to utilize ill gain or harm. And your word says, Behold, I give unto you all power to tread upon serpents and scorpions, and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Luke 10, 19 promises to his children. It's time the children of God rise up and take their place as warriors of Jesus Christ through the power and authority of his name. Who, by the way, children of God, when Jesus Christ is on your side, when you are born again and you can confess without manipulation, Jesus Christ is my Lord. Not Jesus Christ is King of King is my Lord. Jesus Christ is my Lord in that manner or Jesus Christ my Lord then you have the unfair advantage on the enemy. Meaning, Jesus Christ is all-powerful, invincible, King of kings and Lord of lords. All power has been given unto him, and he gives that to his children. Matthew 28, 18, 16, 16, 18, 28, 16, 18, right through there. Jesus says, I've been given all power in heaven and the earth. And then he turns around also in Luke 10, 19, he gives it to us. His children. All power. And I give you praise for that. We should be walking in all power and all authority. Not shaking hands with the devil. Not straddling the fence. We should be faithful children of God. And we can do that through you, Jesus Christ. Be ye holy as I am holy is possible when we listen to Jesus Christ, follow the word of God, and do as they lead us to do. None of us are perfect. None of us are above the other. But it's possible it would not have been written in the Word of God. It's His robe of righteousness that gets put on us. And it is His mind that we have. So when we say in the Word of God, for Thou hast not given us a spirit of fear, the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind, that is referring to the mind of Jesus Christ within us. A sound, strong, powerful mind. The mind of Christ. Unwavering, unmoving, uncompromising. The mind of Christ. Thank you, Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father God. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Mm. Those of you that still do not like the fact that I talk or pray so much, take it to Jesus Christ in prayer. I pray before I get on here, you let me say what you want me to say. Don't let me speak what I don't need to speak. So it may not be for you, but it's for somebody. Sometimes it's for myself too. So take it to Jesus Christ. If you're getting offended, go to Matthew 24, 10 and read that, please. Thank you. Vision of Antichrist upon a throne. And I do say that in love. My concern is for each person's soul. It is. Vision of Antichrist. Again, the Lord called me to him and I was praying. 
eight twenty nine twenty four at twelve forty five p.m. Lord, I see the man of sin sitting on his gold throne. Let me just say this: this is a golden red throne. I keep seeing the one I saw him being crowned underground, sitting in. I see him clearly, except this time he's in an expensive light gray suit. His face is slightly shadowed, but I can see clearly who he is. Yes, daughter, the shadowing is mostly under his, and he said, yes, daughter. This is me describing again. The shadowing is mostly under his eyes like half moons. What look like? Otherwise, his face, his whole body is in the light. This is because, daughter, his time to fully rise and be exposed has come. He has a dark, deep, brooding look on his face. And his eyes are looking straight forward, Jesus Christ. He never moves his eyes from looking straight forward. This is the same red and gold sun throne I have repeatedly seen him sitting in. His arms are extended resting on the throne's armrest. His hands are curving around the end of the armrest. Now his suit looks dark in color. It just changed. Possibly dark navy or blue. His shirt is still white and his tie is still the plain red but still expensive. Still expensive I can tell. There seems to be nothing or no one around him. It is a lone room with only one light. There's one light is just shining down on him. But again, there's shadows on his face. But again, there's only a small amount of shadows noticeable under his eyes. Otherwise, the light upon him allows him to be clearly seen. That's all that's in the shadows. Just right here. Just just out. You have deduced correctly, daughter. The lawless one, the man of sin's time to be fully revealed and fully seen is almost here. It won't be long before his face is no longer hidden by any, any shadows, my daughter. Then what happens, Jesus Christ? I still see him sitting in this, on this gaudy throne looking forward unmoving so I mean, he just looked he never wavered looked his, his blue eyes were just looking straight never flinched never blinked he was just looking straight forward i still see him sitting in the gaudy throne looking forward and moving i will show you my little one now i see the light has increased shining directly on antichrist's face a door has now appeared to the right, which would be to his left where he's sitting. The room is still dark, minus the light on any Christ. So as a door opened, a shaft of bright light appeared. Okay, now he's fully in the light. I see a smile begin forming on any Christ's face, although he's still unmoving and looking forward, straight forward. Sir, it's your time. I hear someone, a man's voice say from the other side of the door. Antichrist turns his head in the direction of the open door and smiles bigger. Finally, I heard him say as he yelled back to the open door in reply to the man's voice, Tell the world I'm coming. As he stands up, he straightens his suit jacket, his tie, then the cuffs of his white sleeve shirt. He turns and starts walking toward the door. And now it's gone. Jesus Christ, it's gone. Yes, daughter, you have seen what you needed to know. Only a few shadows remain upon his face until his true identity shall be known. First among my children and lastly the rest of the world. By then it will be too late and evidently seen. Here are the scriptures. Revelation chapter 13, Zechariah 11, 16 through 17. 2 Thessalonians 2, 1 through 12. 
Daniel 9, 27. Daniel 11, 36 through 39. So I ask that you take this to Jesus Christ in prayer. You pray about it. Try it and test it. Do all things as the Lord Jesus Christ says in the Word of God. 1 Thessalonians 5, 21 says to prove all things. Hold fast to what you know. In other words, what you do know. Jesus Christ is your Lord. He saved you. What you know of the Word of God. Hold fast unwavering. Excuse me. And Lord, do I mention that too? Okay. I have a dream about Antichrist that I won't be sharing. But there was something I was asking. A lot of these are, are answers to studies and questions I'm asking the Lord Jesus Christ. That's what a lot of it is. And a lot of it is just revealing the enemy's plans. Whatever. And then he shows me how I was questioning the Lord one time. How are we going to survive? You know, how, how? And then I had the dream about the one carrot that just kept filling up. God is faithful in all things. In this dream, I was asking the Lord about Daniel. Daniel 11. I'm going to go verse 38. But in his estate, talking about Antichrist, shall he honor the God of forces, and a God whom his fathers knew not shall he honor with gold and silver, and with precious stones and pleasant things. Now this is already saying beforehand. Let me go up one before that. Neither shall he regard the God of his fathers, nor the desire of women, nor regard any God, for he shall magnify himself above all. But he in his estate, in his estate, shall he honor the God of forces, and a God whom his fathers knew not shall he honor with gold and silver and with precious stones and pleasant things. Now this is where this next verse is where he answered something for me. And I'm asking you to take it to Jesus Christ in prayer. Try, test, and discern it. 39. Thus shall he do in the most strongholds with a strange God. A strange God. I said, Lord, what is that? What is that? Because he's done denied all the other gods. What is that? Whom he shall acknowledge and increase with glory. A strange God he will acknowledge and increase with glory. And he shall cause them to rule over many. And shall divide the land for gain. What Jesus Christ showed me in this dream was that's the AI. But take it to Jesus Christ in prayer. That is the strange God. The AI that he will be ruling with. Alright, take it to Jesus Christ in prayer. Try, test, discern everything. As my mama said growing up, don't don't take no man's word. Not even mine, because I'm human. You go to the word of God. Right now I'm studying something out that came up on uh, a question when, when something else arose up. And because I do want to know the truth and even though the Holy Spirit said this is an error I still wanted to study it out further because of things that was mentioned inside of the telegram group so I have been pulling up and studying about the court of heaven and how that Lord do I go there When you break it down, there's one scripture everybody uses that says all judgment is given to Jesus. John 5.22. When you go down further verse, it talks about he does not judge, God judges. Which when you break down every time, it mentions God is a judge, but he judges through Jesus Christ. But also Jesus' words judge. So that explains why there are times Jesus Christ will advocate be a mediator, intercede for us. And the thing that was said was that our actions and deeds advocate for us. That's not right. What I'm seeing is our actions and our deeds is the evidence in which we are judged from. 
and I have pulled scripture upon scripture going through this. To advocate means to petition for someone, to intercede. You you petition and intercede. You cry out for that person's behalf on somebody else's behalf to someone else. Father God is very much still involved in all this, but he still does the judgment through Jesus Christ. It's a Godhead. It's a Godhead, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. So as, as I've been studying, and I don't know if I'll share this all or not, and I'm asking, please take and study this. Because again, I knew what the Lord had showed me, but I wanted to get scripture and everything to see if I understood it correctly or not. I am teachable. But if it's false, I'm going to spit it out, regurgitate it, whatever has to happen. I do not want Satan's false doctrine inside me, Lucifer's doctrine. I want the Word of God, so I take everything to Jesus Christ. Is this true? And I will say, write me if I'm wrong. Ephesians 1, 17 through 19, as I do this research. So we have, because also too, we have, we have where it talks about the, the books being open and Father God being there. Because he's the Ancient of Days, it talks about in Daniel. In Revelation, it talks about he who the light shines and the books are being opened. But then we also have where it talks about Jesus Christ will judge the, the dead and the living. It all goes together. They work together. But through Jesus' words, through Jesus' actions, through him coming to this earth. And then when he stands before us, when we stand before him, it's you, that's why, what am I saying? Please pull all the scriptures before you make a determination this is how it is even if you have been taught all your life now we know there is a courtroom there's a court because we stand before the judge there's an advocate Jesus Christ is our advocate he's our lawyer he petitions mediator he's the mediator it says in Hebrews the mediator that is the one that goes between a person and another to make sure they can communicate you know can communicate and things go smoothly. Jesus, when he gave his life, became our mediator. There is an accuser of the brethren. So that would be what? The district attorney. You know, so you have all these things. There is a courtroom in heaven. But again, I will say, when you start studying it, we are judged by our actions. We are judged by what we do. We are judged by whether we accept Jesus Christ or not. We're judged by whether that blood covers us or not. It is our actions. Our actions, which is the evidence that we're judged by. Jesus Christ advocates petitions to the Father for us. Or else he would not be forever interceding on the right hand of the Father. I don't even have the verses in here. I would give you some of them. I was doing my study in the other room. So please, again reason I was studying is that comment was made and I've been seeking the Lord I couldn't find all the verses I was looking for so I and plus he's had me write down some of these dreams so today I sat down I said okay Lord you have told me Romans 2 16 this verse is the one he gave me when all that was going on even though I wasn't addressing that at the time it was another comment that was made inside. But it says, Romans 2.16, In the day when God shall judge the secrets of men by Jesus Christ, according to my gospel, by Jesus Christ, but God is still involved in the judging. When God judged the world, He judges the world, but now He does it with Jesus Christ. Because Jesus Christ is a perfect mediator. He is both God and man flesh. He has become the high priest. He knows what we go through. He, he endured what we did. He gave his life for us. He became the mediator. He became everything. So there is a court in heaven. And there are all these things. But never take anybody else's word. Again, what my mom said. Go to the word of God. I don't know where to start. Well, right now we still have the internet. Put in 
is there, you know, who is judge? Who is the advocate? You know, do we have a lawyer? I know it sounds funny, but it still brings things up. Jesus Christ is this and so much more. And yes, it does say, I hear you, Lord. He said, John 5, 22 is the, one, the verse everyone uses. 21. I'm going to go over here first. For as the Father raises up the dead and quickeneth them, as the Father, Father God has that power to do it, even so the Son quickeneth whom he will. For the Father judges no man, but hath committed all judgment to the Son. They run with that. Which, it sounds pretty cut and dry until you start reading the rest of the chapter. And it talks about I'm trying to find it because I don't have my books in here. Alright, Lord, where was it? But it goes down further. And mentions okay, it's gotta be over here. Holy Spirit, please. Sir. Verse 30, and this is the same chapter, John 5. I can to my own self do nothing as I hear I judge, and my judgment is just. Because I seek not mine own will, but the will of the Father which has sent me. Okay, where is the other verse, Lord? It talks about. Let me go get my words. Let me pause this. Sorry about that. <laughs> okay. In John 5, verse 20, 22, the verse is talking about, For the Father judges no man, but hath committed all judgment unto the Son. Okay. It's actually in a different chapter that I was talking about. Because when you go into John 12, it's still in the same book. That's what I meant to say. In John 12 verse 46 verse 46 and I am come a light into the world that whosoever believeth on me should not abide in darkness 47 and if any man hear my words and believe not I judge him not for I came not to judge the world but to save the world he that rejecteth me and receiveth not my words hath one that judged him the word that I have spoken the same shall judge him in the last day for I have not spoken of myself, but the Father which sent me. He gave me a commandment, what I should say and what I should speak. Again, there too, we see that it, the, the words that Jesus Christ is speaking will judge the people also. But also that Jesus says here, he did not come into the world to judge. I judge him not. I came not to judge the world, but to save the world. So it's not that it's a contradiction. It's saying, Holy Spirit, help me to say this in a way that brings clarity. Like I said, I just started in all this. Because we see in Romans 2.16 that the Father... Father God judges through Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ has been given judgment. He's been given the power to execute judgment. And hath given him authority to execute judgment. Also because he is the Son of God. Does not say all authority. That's in John 5, 27. So Jesus Christ has the authority to judge. But we also know when you start doing the verse scriptures... In Daniel, let me give you the verses, 7, 9 through 14, verse 13, speaks of the Ancient of Days. You're telling me to go there. All right. In this particular scripture, the books are opened. Daniel sees the books open, and Jesus Christ is called in there. So we see Father God in the prophetic vision of Daniel. Being present when the books are opened. And in the position of Jesus Christ is not 
Let me read it before I go any further. Lord Jesus. I know it's going to make me do this. I studied for most of the day. Well, not most of the day. A good part of the day. Daniel 7, 9. I beheld till the throne, I beheld till the thrones were cast down, and the Ancient of Days did sit, whose garment was white as snow, and the hair of his head like the pure wool. His stone was like the fiery flame, and his wheels as burning fire. 10. A fiery stream issued and came forth from before him. Thousands, thousands ministered unto him, and ten thousands times ten thousand stood before him. The judgment was set, and the books were opened. This is Father God. And how you know it's not Jesus Christ with the white hair. Verse 11. I beheld then because of the voice of the great words which the horn spake. I beheld even till the beast was slain and his body destroyed and given to the burning flames. Uh, verse 12. As concerning the rest of the beasts, they had their dominion taken away, yet their lives were prolonged for a season and a time. This is after Armageddon. And um, their life is prolonged for that thousand year reign for Jesus Christ. Satan will be loose for a little bit, and then he'll be cast in the lake of fire. That's in Revelations um, 19, it starts with. Rev and verse 13. I saw in the night visions, and behold, one like the Son of Man came with the clouds in heaven and came to the Ancient of Days. Okay, so he's, he's coming to this point after the books are open. And they brought him near before him. And they were given him dominion and glory in the kingdom that all people, nations, and languages should serve him. His dominion in an everlasting dominion, which shall not pass away, and his kingdom that which shall not be destroyed, the millennium reign. Okay, so we know that Father God is present and Jesus Christ is present. Because we also know that, it, and there's other verses that bring this together with Father God shining as a light. Um, God covers himself in light, Psalms 104, 2, Revelation 20, 11 through 15. Um, it's also where it talks about the light and the books being open. But we also have where it talks about, about Jesus Christ judging the quick and the dead in Hebrews. Did I write that down? So when, what, I'm, what I've been studying and questioning the Lord is, how does that work? Because you have God that judges. You have Jesus Christ that judges. Being given all judgment. But it, it gives all judgment. But, but the more I study. It talks about judgment over people. Over man. But judgment of the world itself. Comes through God. But through Jesus Christ. They're both still involved. They're a Godhead. The Holy Spirit moves. And operates does the bidding too please take this to Jesus Christ in prayer I know I, this is not in depth because I'm I'm in the middle of studying this I did not want to mention it but the Lord said to mention it yes I did what I'm asking try test and discern this do the study further I can give you the verses I have right quick but you'll have to just kind of um, 1 John 2 1 Colossians 3, 1, Mark 16, 19, Hebrews 7, 25, Romans 8, 34. These are referring to Jesus being the advocate, the intercessor, the mediator. Jesus is the judge, John 5, 22, the verse we went over. 1 Peter 4, 5, Father God is judge too. Romans 2, 6. I also have Ecclesiastes 12, 14. When I do a study, I do a very in-depth in, in study. This is just like a skeleton of it. I know the basic meaning of Ecclesiastes 12, 14, but there's more to it, apparently. For God shall bring every work into judgment with every secret thing, whether it be good or whether it be evil. Acts 17, 30 through 22, Romans 14, 10. First is about Jesus Christ being the mediator, showing you he does play a role. So he has to petition to Father God. Father God is still very much involved in all this. 
1 Timothy 2 5, Hebrews 8 6, 9 15, 12 24. Our actions and deeds are the evidence. This I just started on this. Ecclesiastes eleven nine. Matthew twelve thirty six through thirty seven. Second Corinthians five ten. He that judgeth me is the Lord. First Corinthians four four. And what the th- thing is, Jesus Christ was made Lord of Lords. The Father God bears the title of Lord also. So there's so much to them. When it says, I and my Father are one. Now we understand there's three in the Godhead. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. It does not say Trinity or didn't. I don't know if the new translation says it. It's always been Godhead. And there's evidence he's talking about God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. It talks about being baptized in the name. And the Godhead is fully in Jesus Christ and Colossians. It's there. To deny it is to deny part of the Bible that's been written. We all appear before the judgment seat of Christ. 2 Corinthians 5.10 Again, this also shows as a courtroom, as a judge, and that we're deed, and we are judged by our actions and our deeds. The Ancient of Days, Father God as the Judge, Daniel 7, 9 through 14 and verse 13, Revelation 20, 11 and 15, and Daniel 7, 22 mentions Ancient of Days again. And then to connect that also, Psalms 104, 2 talks about God covering himself with light, which is when you read those verses, if the Lord leads you to study that. And then I had um, Jesus Christ judges not. John 12, 46 through 50. John 3, 17 through 19. Which condemnation is, is also when you study out the word judgment. Um, it sounds like like his Jesus' role in judgment will come later at the end. But he confers with the Father. Nothing is done in judgment without Jesus Christ and Father God. Okay, Father, according to 1 Peter 1.17, Father God judges every man's work. This is New Testament, 1 Peter 1.17. And again, where it says we will be judged by what Jesus Christ spoke is John 12, 48 through 49. I'm here and I need to read 1 Peter 1, 17. I apologize for having to get up. I was not expecting to do this. Those of you that like to study here is a good study to start with. 1 Peter 1, 17. And if ye call on the Father, Father God, who without respect of persons judgeth according to every man's work, pass the time of your sojourning here in fear. So, the scripture shows repeatedly they're both involved somehow in the judgment, even though all judgment has been placed in Jesus Christ. I think that's all judgment, but still with Father God conferring, with Father God Having his say. He's God. He gave Jesus Christ all authority. Called him king and kings and lord and lords. He is part of Father God. So he has God in him. But he's not Jehovah God. They're the same but separate. And I know some people say. Well it's just. You know. You can't always explain it. You can't. You have to do some of it on faith. None of us have been up in heaven and saw God directly and see how they're one and yet separate. I've seen them separate and I've seen them work together in unity. One mind, one body, one accord is to say the church. But are they actually one? He was the word. He's an actual part of Father God. Why would he distinguish between that? He is God's word. 
He was a word made flesh. They, if Jesus Christ is God's word, yes, judgment is going to come through his words. But it still takes Father God to issue those words. Thank you, Lord. I understand now. All right, take this to Jesus Christ in prayer. Again, I am in the middle of studying. This is my understanding thus far. So you take it, try it, test it, discern it. And then you do whatever Holy Spirit Jesus Christ tells you. Again, I keep saying try and test everything. People say I'm not teachable. I am. I want to know the truth. I do not want to ingest garbage. I do not want it in my spirit. I don't want to put it in my eyes. I don't want to hear it. I'm not going to if I can help it. But we have standards to discern, try, test, and prove. And pulling a study like this is an example of proving something, testing it, and trying it. That's one of our means while we still have the Word of God here to do so. Please utilize that. And when I say study, I intend to break down all these words. Mediator, advocate, with the Greek information and the Hebrew and all. That's my intention, Lord willing. Break it all down. Bring in everything that pertains to it. Even like, for example, where it said, Father covers himself in light. Why is that important? Because it talks about the Ancient of Days covering himself in light. And then Revelation 20, it talks about he who's on the throne covered in light. You know that's Father God, not Jesus Christ there. Because you pulled the other verses. Holy Spirit will lead you if you ask Him. He's a wonderful teacher. And sometimes I'll just say, Lord, where do you want me to go? How do I start this? Sometimes you just give me a word. Start with Advocate, daughter. You know? And if you have a translation you will read different, He may give you like lawyer. Start with this, which lawyers is in the Bible too. The KJV. Pray about it. Take it to Jesus Christ in prayer. And remember, why I'm going to say it, Lord, and you tell me, say, to him that knoweth to do good and doeth not, to him it is sin. I don't remember exactly where that's at. It's in the New Testament. You can do an internet search. To him that knoweth to do good and doeth not, it is sin. Okay. You're called to try and test everything. You test people, the spirit in people. You discern. Do I say anything about that? Okay. And you do everything according to the way the Word of God says. Yes, there's a lot of changes being made. But when you take this Word of God, and you pray and you ask Jesus Christ, or you ask Holy Spirit in Jesus Christ's name, to teach you the truth, your meaning, or give you a revelation, or give you understanding. I say it over and over again. You will get the divine revelation and understanding from heaven. Jesus Christ forever settled in heaven. He is a word made into flesh. You need first in John 1, chapter 1 tells us, I think it's 14, verse 14 talks about John 1, 1 and John 14. Jesus Christ was a word of God made into flesh. God and man. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> the word, Jesus is the word. You give judgments through your word. But you still have to have the person issuing them. Hallelujah. Whether it be a keystroke, whether communication, you still have to have the person giving the communication. And then the words will go forth, whether they be in a, a post, whether they be in sign language or whatever. Jesus Christ is Father God's word. His word, his words, when he spoke, Jesus Christ moved, Holy Spirit moved. All things were created by Jesus Christ from Father God speaking. Hallelujah. Lord, I love you. I'm being told to get off here. God bless. Stand in the blood of Jesus Christ always. 
Or do you want me to wrap it up? If you want to contact me, you can reach me at the My Lovely Jesus Ministry Telegram chat group. Not a single message, a, a, a private message to me through the Telegram My Lovely Jesus Ministry group. Well, I don't want to give all the information. Give your prayer request if you're trying to reach me for that. I will pray, and if the Lord needs me to step in further, I will contact you. I am called to separate. I am pulling myself away under the leading of the Holy Spirit. When it's all said and done, there may be one or two people that will have direct access to me because this is how I'm being led to go. Do not get offended. You need to seek Jesus Christ if you do. So I will not be answering again. And I say this because we have new viewers and we have new people. And then we have people that's just not paying attention. Which I love them and forgive them. If you leave a message on Rumble, a message on... Because on Rumble you can still comment. If you leave a message on my personal Telegram, my personal Facebook, most likely you're not even going to get an answer. I won't even read it unless Holy Spirit tells me to look at it. So please, listen to what I'm being told by the Holy Spirit and Jesus Christ to do. Because I'm not going to step into disobedience. Because you want to send me an email. Or you want to, well, you can't send me an email. You want to send me something. Or you, you want a private prayer request. Or a private deliverance session. Or a private. That's not what I'm called to do right now. I have learned I can pray over the group. And there be prayers answered. Not just my prayers. You don't understand when you put it in this group chat, you don't have just one person praying. You've got many. The power of prayer is mighty. I'm just a daughter in the kingdom of heaven. I'm the same as every other child of God. We all have our different callings that we have to fulfill, but there is none above each other. So if you have a prayer request for me, Go through the Telegram ministry, my lovely Jesus ministry group chat. The link will be under here. And again, you will not only have me praying for you, but other brothers and sisters of Jesus Christ. I ask that you please honor and respect that because I'm not going to be disobedient. I choose not to be. And I say that in love because first and foremost, I have to protect my relationship with Jesus Christ. Father God, they're everything to me. They're everything. They tell me to walk away from something, shut it down, or, or to never get behind this microphone again. I'll say, yes, sir. I can do it. Why? I love them. I love them. They will take care of me. Jesus Christ, Father God, will take care of me. They've always taken care of me. And they've proven just... How well they can. Since all of this has happened and he's had me step out. I know what it's like. To live more in the supernatural than the natural realm. And sometimes it's for your own good. The things that I've had to go through. Not lifting myself up. This is just me giving a testimony. If not for the Holy Spirit supernaturally moving. Father God giving me warning or, or giving me advance warning. I would not be here. So I choose to be obedient. We each have a calling to fulfill. And in Jesus Christ's name, I will fill mine too. I love you all. I pray for all. I forgive my enemies. Every time somebody contacts me, I lay them for the Lord. And yes, I know who is and who isn't. Truly from God. Even everything I do. Sometimes it takes a lot more peeling those onion layers back. But if I get the least little mm, you know, mm, 
or if I get a continuum of spirit that recognizing spirits I deal with all the time that I've had to fight in combat. Yeah, I recognize them. They're not hidden. But all things are done in God's time. He's faithful. He's faithful. Please pray about all this. Again, we also have the My Lovely Jesus Ministry website, www.mylovelyjesusministry.com. All the information is free. You can use even the Dreams, Visions, PDFs, but do not change the words of anything that Jesus Christ has given me or Father God. If you do and I find out, the Holy Spirit leads me to it, I will ask you to remove it and not change it. Not use it again. Why? Because there's sometimes he gives me deliberate words that in our language, in our world, is not correct. Grammatically correct. But they have a meaning. God deals with the meaning behind things, not what's correct in our eyes. Quit looking at the errors and get the message. God bless. Love you all in Jesus Christ's name.